Do you love Dapper Day? Maybe looking for some Dapper Nights? Well, Disney may have just the thing for you. Stay tuned for this and more coming next from Fresh Baked. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Fresh Bake. Thank you so much for joining us today. Big mind hugs for everybody. So if you're a fan of Dapper Days at Disneyland, then this announcement might be just for you. Or, well, or maybe it isn't. I'm not sure. The announcement is for Disneyland After Dark, a new series of events that are scheduled to begin on January 18th and are designed to be sort of, sort of unique, uh, can't-miss experiences that are going to feature themed food, uh, special entertainment, and exclusive merchandise. The first event in this series is Throwback Night, which is just another way of saying Dapper Days, really, or, or Dapper Nights, rather, uh, at least if you uh, follow the description given in the Disney Parks blog announcement. Uh, and the difference here, though, is that this is a, a formal Disney-sanctioned event. Guests are invited to travel back in time to the 50s and the 60s, dressed in their date night best to enjoy swing bands and vintage attraction posters and Fantasy in the Sky fireworks and special photo locations. As part of the package, guests will get unlimited digital downloads of the photos taken at these special photo ops, plus an exclusive lanyard and a vintage inspired, not a vintage map, but a vintage inspired park map with all of these special locations identified on the map. The OC register though had a few more details and it's, it, it looks like it's set up a lot like Mickey's Halloween party. Uh, it's $95 per ticket. Uh, the event starts at 8 p.m., goes till 1 a.m and then guests are allowed two hours uh, in advance to enter the park, or 6 p.m. Tickets go on sale December 7th for the general public and November 30th for annual pass holders. No word yet from Disney on how many nights they're going to be offering or what other events they have planned as part of the Disney uh, After Dark event, but my guess is, is it's probably going to be about a month's worth, but that's just a hunch. Now in other news, we're getting a new scene in Star Tours, one to coincide with the upcoming release of The Last Jedi. Guests will be flying through Crate in their Star Speeder beginning November 17th. Now that's just kind of a small piece of news, but what came with this was a rumor started by WDW News Today that is suggesting that Disney has plans to split the timelines, to split the attraction into two timelines. One is the current trilogy of films, or actually just two films, and then anything before that, the prequels and the original Star Wars saga. Now this seems like it would be a good idea as Ian and I, along with many other people, have always been a bit baffled by Disney's casual nature towards the timeline in the attraction, uh, seemingly giving guests the ability to travel through time. And by this I mean that there is a possibility that a guest could go from Hoth, which is from Empire Strikes Back, to Jakku, which is from uh, The Force Awakens. And these scenes are absolutely reminiscent of scenes that we already know well from their respective films. Of course, we all just chalk it up to this being a fun way to promote the films and to enjoy scenes from Star Wars. You try not to think about it too much, you know. But then we get this from the WDW News Today. Per the rumor indicated on WDW News Today, uh, as of the 17th, only those scenes from the last two movies from the current trilogy will be shown at Star Tours. There will be no scenes at all from the prequel or from the original trilogy. And then at a later date, they're gonna give guests the option to choose one timeline or the other. Now, a couple things. <laughs> uh, we've heard nothing from Disney about this. Considering that the 17th is just two days away, I find this rumor to be dubious at best. And what about the queue? The queue is absolutely set in a timeline, at least in the original trilogy, maybe the prequels, we could argue either way, but that's definitely C-3PO, that's definitely R2-D2, and that is definitely a trap. And finally, we've only got two confirmed scenes from the current trilogy of films, the one from Jakku from Force Awakens with Finn, and then the current one that they just announced, the this, this scene through Crate. There is, though, a hint of another new scene in the Disney Parks blog announcement uh, for The Last Jedi. So if we were to infer that that is the case, then we've got three total scenes from the current trilogy of films, which is enough to complete an attraction, but so much for, you know, having a randomized experience like we currently have. But for me, the most important consideration is, is why, even, why even bother? Star Tours, in my opinion, is a dead attraction walking. I don't believe that there's any reasonable chance that this attraction lasts past the opening of Star Wars Land Galaxy's Edge. Star Tours by itself cannot exist in Tomorrowland as of 2019, nor would I expect them to put it in Galaxy's Edge. There's no chance of that happening, none. And I mean that. You guys, whoever thinks that you could put Star Tours in Galaxy's Edge really need to think about that closely. 
So why then go through all that trouble? It just seems unnecessary. Nobody was really complaining about the timeline, not for real. I mean, Ian and I poke fun at it a little bit, but it's just fun. We're not really upset about it. I mean, plenty of people are going to this attraction. Ian goes every single week. And that's just a rhetorical question because I have no idea why they would actually. But I will say this, I wouldn't mind it if they did. Uh, it's okay if they did. I just don't, I just don't get why they would. But Disney does a lot of things that they don't have to. Uh, and better is better is, is the bottom line. So if they go for it, I'm all behind it. Go ahead and fix that thing, Disney. Go ahead. <laughs> all right, guys, one last thing. Many were baffled by this tweet uh, from the Star Wars Twitter feed uh, in response to Disney's announcements about the new Disney After Dark series and Throwback Night. The confusion, I think, stems from the fact that they're trying to sort of attach Star Wars or Star Tours to Throwback Night and trying to figure out how that works. But I think it's safe to say that they weren't trying to speak to Throwback Night specifically, but rather to the Disney After Dark series and sort of hinting at the fact that we're probably going to get a Star Wars night as part of the Disney After Dark series. Which, by the way, sounds possibly really, really cool. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today, but we want to hear from you. Are you looking to go to Throwback Night as part of the Disney After Dark series for $95 per person? And do you think it's possible that Disney might go ahead and limit our Star Tours experience to just one timeline? Let us know in the comments below. And until next time, don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. Subscribe to our channel and fresh baked.